Hey guys, this is Mr. V and this is Abe's review video topic 4.1, uh, plate tectonics. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about plate tectonics, and you probably have heard many of these terms before. Um, the difference is they're going to be they're going to sound a little bit more um, quote unquote scientific, right? Um, so you probably heard crust mantle core, but we still heard, use a lot of those terms, but we're also going to use a little bit more um, scientific terms, right? So you're going to see the terms lithosphere asthenosphere, mesosphere, um, and, um, you know, of course, the core itself. But the difference is that um, they mean the same thing. So it's important to understand that the lithosphere just means that that's going to be that top layer, okay? Um, that's the crust. And then the asthenosphere is going to be that upper mantle, and then you're going to have the mesosphere, excuse me, which is that lower mantle, okay? And we live on that uh, lithosphere, which is the crust, and that's going to be where the plate is less dense, so it's going to float uh, a little bit above the rest. And you see these circles forming up here. Those are convection currents, okay? Um, so those convection currents, they play kind of a big role as to whether or not um, things are going to be And so um, then we have plate boundaries, okay? So those plate boundaries um, are going to be three different kinds, and you're probably very familiar with them, but they're convergent, um, divergent, and uh, transform. So starting with convergent, uh, those plates are going to be pushing towards each other. So what you're going to see is they tend to push towards each other, um, and when you have one that's uh, an oceanic plate, uh, that oceanic crust is going to push below the other one, causing a subduction zone. Um, and that's going to cause volcanoes. It's going to release a lot of magma. So you'll see here in the diagram um, that uh, there's a lot of uh, crust right there. That's going to be pushing it down. And as it melts, that's going to lead to uh, magma coming up, and that's going to be a volcano. Okay. And then so uh, moving on to divergent boundaries, those are going to be where the plates push away from each other. So those plates are going to typically push away, and what's happening is in the asthenosphere, there's going to be movement from those rocks uh, coming up, and that is going to cause new rock to pop up, and that's going to be your, um, your typical uh, mid-ocean ridge, okay? And so um, that's one of the uh, pretty common things you're going to see there, and you may see some earthquakes, but it's a little less frequent because there's no collision or sliding of these plates uh, near each other. But there, that doesn't mean that doesn't happen. That's just not as often. And then you see transform boundaries, and these, of course, are famous for having um, pretty powerful earthquakes, and that's because um, those earthquakes, they happen to have a... Um, uh, very shallow area, and when these what these plates are doing is they're sliding right past each other. So they're causing um, this movement right past, and when that uh, energy builds up, that can lead to an earthquake. So here we have the plate boundaries, and one thing I want you to understand is that one plate can and does end up having many different boundaries. So if we look at the Pacific plate here, right, right up here at the top, it's got a couple of uh, convergent boundaries. Okay, and that uh, follows all the way down to the left side right here. Okay, but then when you get to the bottom, the southern portion of that plate, you get a mix of divergent plate boundaries as well as some convergent. And then probably one of its most famous boundaries is over here um, in uh, off the coast of California. That's going to be the San Andreas fault line, which is a transform boundary. So it's important to understand that a plate is not just one boundary with one type of uh, geological formation, is that it's many, and because of that, this plate can be very active. So the Pacific plate itself is actually called the Ring of Fire because of all the volcanoes and earthquakes um, that it does have in all those different areas uh, around. And then, of course, one other thing to note is that they also have these little hot spots right here, like Hawaii. Okay. Hawaii itself is a hot spot that um, um, is kind of like a puncture in the middle of the plate, and that hot spot is releasing magma, and that's how that island arc chain formed in the middle of that ocean. Okay. And so as you can see, there's so many varied formations depending on what you've got. If you've got uh, two land plates that are coming together, instead of having a subduction zone, you end up actually having a mountain chain. So like the Himalayas, that's an example of that. Um, of course, you can see volcanoes pretty much everywhere, and that's pretty much uh, characterized by the fact that um, there's going to be plates melting and that magma is going to be rising up. So you can have that volcano up here in the middle. You can have that at different subduction zones. It just depends on whatever it is you're looking for. Okay. 
Um, and of course, these are convergent and uh, divergent boundaries and just depends where you are. And you can even have transform boundaries in the middle of the ocean, which we'll talk about shortly. Okay. So an uh, earthquake forms at those transform boundaries um, by having that uh, plate boundary kind of build up pressure. So it builds up energy and builds up pressure over time. And then finally, that pressure will release and that will cause your earthquake to occur because that energy will go passing through the rock and as it passes through the rock that's going to cause the earth to move itself so the earth itself is not shaking on purpose it's the energy from that uh, release that's going to be passing through that we are feeling uh, throughout and so what we know is that earthquakes provide a ton of information for us all those little dots on the left diagram those are all earthquakes or volcanoes that occur and that's how we know that plate happens where it does and then you can use that to draw a map of the one on the right side and see where are the rest of the plates, how do they interact with each other, and where do they go from there. So um, that does provide us some information and help us out in identifying where these plates are and how they're moving. But occasionally you do see some uh, plate tectonics, some earthquakes forming these island arc chains. So one example of that would be, I mentioned Hawaii a moment ago, but Indonesia, Japan can be like that, uh, can be examples of that as well. And that's because those tend to be like little pock marks or puncture wounds in the middle of these plates and that can cause um, you know volcanic activity earthquakes and you'll see that quite a bit and then one other problem we always tend to have is tsunamis right so if there's an earthquake at the bottom of the ocean what happens is think of that as level and then suddenly when one side drops that's going to cause displacement and the water is going to move upward now in the middle of the ocean you're not going to see that once it hits the shallow shore the water is going to push back and then rise up and that's going to cause the tsunami so it's important to note that you know so it's not like you're going to see a big giant tsunami wave in the middle of the ocean um, instead you'll probably see it you'll see it definitely on shore the water will pull back and as that wave is moving through it causes that water to crash on to, onto the surface and that has many environmental consequences like destruction of habitat drowning species uprooting trees um, and contaminating fresh water with the salt water and the debris that come up from that wave okay so here's some other resources that you can hopefully check out um, that might help you with your studies in this and um, hopefully this was helpful thank you